Здравейте отново. Здравейте на всички, които се присъединяват към тази презентация. Ще дадем още няколко секунди на всички, които са заинтересовани да влезнат в стаята на Юм Университи. Отново да благодаря на Алберто Занети, който ще ни направи тази презентация днес. Той ще ни разкаже малко повече за възможностите за обучение в университета. А на вас искам да напомня още веднъж. Можете да задавате своите въпроси в чат секцията, която се намира в долната част на екраните ви. Правете го там, не в Q&A секцията, за да може всичките въпроси да останат след това записани и ако на някои от тях не успеем да отговориме, да си припомниме какво сте питали и да ви го отговориме в имейлите, които след това ще получите от нас. Моята колега Ивалина ще се включи след малко също, за да може да прочете и отговори на въпросите, които ще зададете на български язик. Така че не се притеснявайте да зададете въпроси както на английски, така и на български. Alberto will present today in English. Well, Alberto, you can start your presentation. Thank you very, very much for your introduction. And I'm very, very happy to be here today. Honestly, it's the first time for me presenting with you. And I'm very happy to participate in this study in Italy fair. As Dimitar said, I am from Università Jum in Milan, and I work in the International Mobility Office. And today I will present you our university through a presentation, which is also a sort of a virtual tour of all the main features of our campus as well. So I will now share my screen and we can start our presentation. Just a quick check to see if you are able to see my presentation in full screen mode. Do you see it? Yes, I think so. Yes, yes. Perfect. So welcome to Università Yulm in Milan. I will start by giving you a few information about the history of the university and its collocation in the higher education sector in Italy. Our university was established in 1968 as the uh, Istituto Universitario di Lingue Moderne. This was the original name of the university in Italian. Despite its relatively young age, if you consider the year of foundation of the classic medieval Italian universities, our university was able to establish itself as a real reference point, as the standard, the center of excellence for communication studies for foreign languages, including interpreting and translation, for tourism, hospitality, new media, the promotion of cultural heritage and creative industries in general. Our university is divided into three faculties, the Faculty of Communication, the Faculty of Interpreting and Translation, and the Faculty of Arts and Tourism. We are a private university based in Southwest Milan, and we are a not-for-profit university. What does that mean? It means that every year our university immediately reinvests all the tuition fees collected from the students in order to create new courses to provide new services and to build new facilities for the students themselves we have very very strong relations with the job market you will see this during our slideshow and we are well known in italy for being the job university or the internship university these are two nicknames that we are very well known for because we have many connections with the job market. A few numbers so you can have a better idea of our dimension. We are not a very big university. We are not a huge generalist university. We have nearly 7,000 students with um, 300 teaching staff members overall. So the teacher to student ratio is one 
on 23, which is very good. I mean, the direct consequence of this is that we are able to understand the students' needs and to actually get to know the students, especially the international students, because the numbers are limited. So if you become a student at Universita Yum, you will never be just a number. You will have a name and a surname. And in the majority of cases, you will have a direct contact with our office. If we take into consideration the courses held in English, completely held in English, 25% of the students come from abroad. And if we take into consideration the overall population of the university, nearly 7% of the students is international. And this number is increasing year by year. Our campus has seven buildings on a 65,000 square meters area with one dedicated subway station in front of the university. We have 14 degree programs between bachelor's and two year master's degrees and 18 one year master programs. Speaking about rankings, our university was ranked in the top 300 universities in the world according to Times Higher Education Impact Rankings in 2021 for two key goals of the 2030 Agenda. That is goal number five, gender equality, and goal number 10, reducing inequalities on campus. And if we speak about the chances national university rankings, which is the national ranking administered by the Ministry of Education of Italy, our university was ranked number one in Italy for services to students in the private mid-size bracket and number one for career progression for the Master of Science in Communication. Of course, we are based in Milan, as I told you before. So if you choose us as your destination, you will be able to discover the real Italian lifestyle in the multicultural financial capital of Italy. Of course, Rome is the political capital, no doubt, but when it comes to events and you know, uh, finding a job and economics finance, Milan is the real capital. So we will be able to experience the heritage sites, visit the museums, attend the hundreds of events that Milan offers every year, go to the fashion shows if you are into fashion and experience the fine living. And Milan is in Lombardy, which is always a good choice for a study abroad experience. First, because it is one of the wealthiest regions in the European Union according to GDP per capita because you can find plenty of job opportunities for graduates. And last but not least, because if you graduate from our university, like any other university in Italy, you can get a 12 month permit of stay extension in order to find a job or to continue with another study experience. As I told you before, Università Yulm has a true international dimension. Why do we say so? Because, well, first, because we have more than 150 partner universities worldwide, which is a lot. We are an Erasmus program university. So our students, including international students can benefit from the Erasmus program and spend a semester or an entire year abroad. We can offer internship programs and thesis research abroad. And our guidance service is really state of the art. We have counseling service, always active, also in English. We have peer tutoring, that is senior students able to help the freshmen with their needs, especially during the first weeks of their studies. And recently we implemented the Unibody platform uh, in our system. So prospective students can chat with regularly enrolled students and uh, they can be matched with um, according to nationality and language, and they can ask for information about campus life. 
a lot of services for disabled students and speaking about career i told you before that we are known for being the job university or the internship university if you ask someone in italy how do i find the job immediately after graduation well they they maybe reply you should take into consideration studying at you because they have a very good career office that's true i mean we have more than 1400 partner companies worldwide we have a mentoring service for startups inside the campus a lot of internship opportunities and our placement office is one of the most efficient in italy just to give you a few more numbers you know in order for you to to have an idea 78 percent of graduates with a master of science from Ulm is able to be employed after one year from graduation against a national average of 68 percent so 10 points more and we have 93 percent of students satisfied with the quality and efficiency of the teaching staff and just to give you a hint, 94% of the overall students interviewed by Alma Laurea in 2021 was satisfied with the overall Universita Yum experience. Our campus is an American style campus. I always like to say that. And normally people interrupt me and, and they are like, why? why do you say it's an American campus? You're an Italian university, why do you say so? Well, I, I say so because if you see our campus, you, you understand that Università Yulm is different from the other traditional universities because, because we have all the buildings in the same area, just like in the US. So you get to the campus in the morning, you do your activities, and you go home in the afternoon. You never have to leave the campus. You never have to use the public transportation during the day. This is one of our key features. We are 10 minutes away from Duomo and the city center by subway. We have three on-campus cafeterias, one public park right in the middle of the campus a lot of services for students and every place that you need to go is within walking distance i'm going to show you a few pictures of the campus this is yulm one the main building of the campus this is the place where the majority of classes are held and where our office is located on the fourth floor this is a picture of the public park which is called the rose garden by the students it's a beautiful place where the students gather uh, during spring and summer and they exchange ideas they prepare for exams they just spend free time together this is one of the three cafeterias this is actually the place where i have lunch every day when i am on campus this picture is is important to me because it shows you the typical Yulm class, I mean, this is the typical lecture in our university. As you can see, the students are seat one in front of the other, uh, you know, side by side. So it's not the traditional way of teaching where you have just maybe 250 people listening and one professor speaking. Our way of teaching is more interactive, cooperative. And finally, a picture of the main entrance of Ulm 6, that is one of the newest buildings that we have on campus, where our main auditorium is located. As you can see, our campus was built in 1993, when the university moved from the city center to this new location, and all the buildings are really, you know, state of the art. And the facilities, the technology is cutting edge. Now let's move on and let's talk about academics. So let's talk about what we offer to students in detail. 
I'm going to say a few things about the Italian education system, not to stop very much on this slide, because, you know, the fair is studied in Italy, so I presume you all know about this. But just to explain the main difference between the two-year master's degrees and the one-year master program, what's the difference? The two-year master's degrees are more academia-oriented, so they, are, uh, they have more theory. They're a good mix between theory and practice, and they can be the pathway to a PhD if you want to go ahead with your studies. While the one-year master programs are more practice-oriented, so they are designed for people who already have maybe a job experience or they want to find a job immediately after graduation. They want to build their network of connections. Speaking about the bachelor's degrees, so the undergraduate programs, we have one program which is entirely held in English, that is corporate communication and public relations. And I will tell you a few words more about this program in the next slide. Then we offer six programs completely held in Italian, interpreter and communication, corporate communication and public relations, communication, media, and advertising, tourism management and culture, arts, media, and cultural events, fashion and creative industries. But of course, you know, the highlight is inevitably corporate communication and public relations in English. I'm gonna give you a few information about this program, which is really unique in the Italian higher education system because it was the first course on public relations to be ever established in Italy. I mean, the original, the Italian version of this program was created 30 years ago. So we have been teaching this program for 30 years now. And the international version, which is not just a translation, it is specifically designed for international students' needs, is now in his fifth year of activity. So it is beginning the sixth year of enrollment, and it is really a reference point in Italy. We have a perfect balance between professionals and academia members in the teaching staff, and 65% of graduates is employed after a year from graduation, which is a very good result for undergraduate programs. As you can see, the study plan progression is designed in order to shape the managers of tomorrow. Uh, you have, in the first year, you have the basis of management and corporate communication, and you have the entry level of English, that is B2. And then you build up your study plan until the third year when you study economics and law. You do laboratories of creativity and design and advertisement, you know, for, for publicity, for advertisement and you complete your knowledge of English at C1 level with a course on public speaking. So you really become an expert in communication and public speaking. At graduate level, so the two-year master's degrees, we have two programs completely held in English. One is strategic communication, and the other one is hospitality and tourism management in our School of Tourism and Hospitality. Then we have five programs which are like the natural continuation of the undergraduate level, specialized translation and conference interpreting, television, cinema, and new media, marketing, consumption, and communication, artificial intelligence for business and society, which is a new course, art, valorization, and markets. I really need to tell you a few things more about the two double degree options that we have, the two programs held in English. I'll start with the strategic communication, which is, I mean, strategic communication, when I, when I learned about this program myself for the first time, I was um, really uh, shocked, so to say, because one of the key features of this program is that it was created, it was built in a way that is completely the opposite of the traditional way which we conceive a new program in Italy. 
you know, when you when you create a new degree program in Italy, what you do is you, you usually gather the faculty. So the faculty members gather all together and they decide the subjects of the study plan. On the contrary, strategic communication was created through a survey. So Universita Yulm asked the um, member of the advisory board and so the partner companies of the university to do a survey in order to determine which were the most requested profile in the job market in the field of communication at graduate level. And the results of this survey created the study plan for strategic communication. So through a bottom-up concept. It's an international faculty with a lot of professors coming from abroad and students can have a double degree option which is you get the chance to spend the second year of your master's degree in one of our partner universities abroad and get a double title a master's degree in strategic communication from Yule and an equivalent title from the partner university we have a partnership with the university of Huddersfield in the uk with Cardiff Metropolitan University, again in the UK, and with the University of Western Australia. Hospitality and tourism management is another master's degree completely held in English, with 60% faculty coming from the academia and 40% of the teaching personnel coming from the hotels. So the hospitality resorts, and we are speaking about top managers in the tourism and hospitality industry coming from our partner companies. You have a semester abroad option, which can be alternative to the double degree option. In the second year, you get the chance to do a second year at UCF in Orlando in the United States and get an equivalent title. This program is also very popular and very famous among international students because it gives you the possibility to customize your study plan with a lot of elective courses that you can put in the study plan in order to you know, broaden your knowledge. Then we have the professional masters or the one-year master programs, as they are usually referred to. Six of them are completely held in English. Communication for international relations, international communication, international tourism and hospitality, international marketing and sales communication, which is also executive. So it is designed for people who already have a job experience, practically speaking. Museology, new media and museum communication, which is completely held online with rolling enrollment and food design and innovation with SPD. Then we have more than 15 programs held in Italian. Now let's talk about the admission requirement to Università Yum and the tuition fees which is probably the most juicy part for the audience today. For the three-year bachelor's degrees, you need to have a high school diploma with at least 12 years of schooling. If you have a national examination in order to access the higher education system in your home country, this examination is mandatory. As for language requirements, B2 language proficiency is requested both in English or in Italian, depending on the course that you choose. If you don't have a certificate, maybe because you were not able to retrieve a certificate uh, during the pandemic period because many test centers were closed, don't worry. You can do a language assessment test which can be administered online from distance. The application process is very, very easy. I'm not going to go into details during this presentation because our host for today's presentation and for the Study in Italy Fair Skylines will be able to guide you through 
the process, but you will see yourself that it's very, very clear. For the two-year master's degrees, the process is pretty much the same. Of course, the main difference is the title, needless to say. If you want to apply for the master's degrees, you need to have a bachelor's degree in a field which is related to your chosen program. So if you are graduated in a field which is completely different from the master's you want to do, well, that could be a bit of a problem. You need to have at least the core subjects in common. B2 language proficiency in English or in Italian is requested. In some selected cases, C1 is requested, like, for example, in the master's degree in interpreting and translation. You need to show a good knowledge of the topics related to your chosen program and strong motivation, which will be evaluated through a Skype interview or a pre-recorded interview. Again, if you are not in possession of an official certification because the test centers were closed during the pandemic, you don't need to worry. We can send you an assessment test or your level of English can be assessed directly through the admission interview in some cases. The it takes for 2022, so for the next academic year, what's the timeline? How does that work? For the long-end programs, for the bachelor's and the two-year master's degrees, we generally have only one intake in September. So the applications will start in November, so next month in 15 days, and will be open until the end of May 2022. For the short-end programs, like the one-year master programs, the executive masters, we may have two intakes depending on the program, one in February and one in September, but the application window may vary a lot. And selected courses like the one I told you before have also rolling application throughout the year. On the bottom of the page, you can see uh, just an example of the academic year. The first semester will start uh, I mean, for this academic year, the first semester was uh, starting on September 27. So on September 27th, we opened the campus to students in presence. And finally, we were able to welcome them. Then we will have an exam session from January until the beginning of February. The second semester from February until April. A second exam session from May, from May until June and the so-called third or winter session, um, sorry, summer session from August until September. And this scheme is repeated every year. So broadly speaking, you have this kind of organization for every academic year. The tuition fees. Tuition fee for the three-year bachelor's degrees is 8,400 euros per year divided into three installments, while the tuition fee for the two-year master's degrees is 9,800 euros per year. The tuition fees for the one-year master programs or the executive programs vary a lot according to the program that you choose. So in case you're interested in one of those programs, please get in touch with our representative, our host today, and I will tell you more. What's the good news? The good news is that we have financial support where we are able to offer financial opportunities for international students as well. We have up to 100% tuition fee reduction on the first year tuition fee based on merit requirement for a selected number of programs. And you can see the list on screen. 50% tuition fee reduction on the first year based on merit requirement, again, for all programs. So if you have a high school diploma or a bachelor's final school equivalent to 70% or above, you may be eligible. The interesting news is that you can be able to renew this tuition fee reduction 
also for the second and the third year if you perform well in the first year. So based on your academic standing in the first year, you can renew the reduction and pay less also for the subsequent years. Of course, the sooner you apply, the better it is because these tuition fee reductions have a limited number of seats available. So they're not for everybody. We have a number of reductions which is limited according to the academic year. International students are then welcome to apply for the DSU regional scholarships, which are offered by the local government of Lombardy with grants up to 4,500 euros per year, in some cases, including accommodation and free meals, if available. These scholarships are granted according merit and family income criteria. So you will need to provide documents um, with information concerning your family financial situation and your properties. The DSU regional scholarships can be combined with the tuition fee reductions offered by Universita Jun. Accommodation. Our university is able to offer accommodation to international students on campus accommodation because we have two university dormitories inside the campus with single rooms with a shared kitchen. Unfortunately, due to the coronavirus situation, we were forced to transform the double rooms into single rooms. So we reduced the capacity of the dormitories by 50%. Again, the sooner you apply, the better it is. And um, between you and me, we usually tend to, you know, take into consideration the application for undergraduate students because they are younger and maybe they need to have on-campus accommodation because it's the first study abroad experience for them. All the rooms are placed in a, a dormitory, which is a five minute walk away from lectures at a special price of 300 euros per month, which is very good if compared to the average living costs of Milan, which is an international capital. So in some cases, it can be um, you know, quite ex expensive. I'm not gonna hide from that. These rooms are ac assigned according to merit criteria, but if you're not able to find a place in one of our dormitories, you can always opt opt for alternative solutions because we cooperate with a number of housing services in Milan. Uh, just to give you a few examples, we, we cooperate with Milan Housing and Grumia or Spot a Home. And so we are able to assist you in this process and give you a hint on how to find accommodation in the surroundings of the university, which is important. Okay, I think this was the end of my slideshow. Thank you very much for your kind attention. You can see our direct contact on screen. And I guess it's now time for a Q&A. So I will stop my screen share now. I will go back to the uh, webinar mode. Ciao, ciao Berto. Ciao, ciao. Very good to see you. <laughs> good to see you too. Thank you for the really <laughs> explaining uh, presentation. Thank Everything you for having me. Very clear. But the people uh, have some questions as well. So would you like me to, can you see them? Would you like me to read uh, them? I can see the box, but maybe if we can also read aloud, it's better okay. for the audience. What do you think? Yes. Um, I can suggest to read them so that you could uh, answer. Yeah. Okay, so we start from the first question. It's from Elena. Uh, is there any entry exam for the Corporate Communications Bachelor Program? Uh, the, the one yes. In English, I suppose. Yes, thank you for your question. Yes, there is an entry exam. There is a, an admission test. 
which can be administered fully online. So you don't need to come to Milan in order to have the test. You can do the test from your house using your computer. The test is composed of um, five modules. There is a part of um, general knowledge. So, you know, um, general broad knowledge of, of, of the, the word, uh, for example, related to politics, geography, you know, information that every student coming out of high school should have. Uh, then there is um, a module on logical reasoning and, um, you know, logical thinking. Then there is a module related to uh, communication skills. So the things that you are going to study at undergraduate level. But generally speaking, let me put it very clear. This admission test is usually passed by the 90% of the international students. Because it is true that it is an admission test, so it is selective, but it is an admission test created to understand whether you have the sufficient preparation to access the undergraduate program. So, you know, usually prospective students from Bulgaria always pass the test immediately. So if I were you, I shouldn't be very worried about it. It's, it's kind of easy because you are such good students coming out of high school. So you normally pass it. Okay. Thank you, Alberto. May I ask uh, if it is the same way as previous years, that if a student fails the test, uh, he or she has the opportunity to retake it. So uh, it's... Yes, uh, there is a second chance. There is a second chance in case you fail the test on the first roll. I don't know, maybe something goes wrong. You have maybe problems with your connections. Anything can happen. There is a second chance. Yes. Okay. Uh, Tsvetelina would like to know, it's a very, very, very good, nice question. Uh, which are the most important qualities that a student enrolling in Yum should strive for and that are therefore emphasized on during the classes? Thank you. This is a very good question. Thank you for asking. Well, I think if I have to be honest with you, I think the main features of an international student at Universita Yulm is probably to be open. Uh, I mean, really, really open to new experiences and really keen on um, learning something new uh, from a different perspective. Because as I, as I told you during the presentation, our university has a very cooperative way of teaching. So the, the traditional lectures where you just, you know, sit down and listen to the teacher for two hours and take notes quietly are very, very few. The majority of our classes is interactive. So if you want to study in a truly interactive environment, if you want to have also challenges during your studies, and if you are inclined to challenge yourself in a study abroad experience, you are the right person for Universita Jung because our environment is stimulating, challenging, and because of our way of teaching, the students are always involved. They are never passive. They are always protagonists of the activities. So the first feature, in my opinion, is yeah, openness. So to be very open to new experiences and to be active, cooperative. Yeah. Great, thank you. Uh, there is a question from Kusara. I will, it's a little bit long, I will read it. Um, yeah. If a candidate has an American high school diploma and plans on studying in English, is there a need to provide an English proficiency test? This is the first part of the question. Then do you accept SAT and AP scores that can strengthen our application? Do extracurricular activities and internships taken during high school matter for the bachelor application process? So the first thing is the English requirements with the American high school diploma. Um, yeah. 
This is another very, very good question. And um, I like to reply to this question a lot because it's technical. Okay. So the, the more <laughs> technical, the, yeah, the more technical that we get, the more fun it is usually. So if you graduate from an American high school and you get your high school diploma, you shouldn't do a, an English language assessment because your, your previous medium of instruction is English. And you can prove it because you have a high school diploma. So you should be exempted from the language assessment. And also, I believe you could be exempted from a number of activities, uh, English language laboratories in the first year, because you studied in English at high school level. So this was the first point. Second point, if you graduate from a high school, um, an American high school, you know, according to the Italian law on access to higher education, you need to have at least three APs. So the APs are not a plus, they are actually necessary in order to be admitted. And these three APs must be given in subjects related to the studies that you wanna do at university. So if you wanna study corporate communication and public relations, for example, you, you may do, I don't know, an AP in marketing, I'm just giving an example, okay? You can do an AP in marketing, you can do an AP in uh, uh, communication skills, and um, you can do an AP in other subjects related to communication studies at undergraduate level in order to be admitted. Of course, if you have SAT examination, this can be considered a plus during the application process as well as any other reference letter, curriculum, extracurricular activities, everything that you have at high school level can be taken into consideration during the application process. Okay, <laughs> thank you. Um, Iskra is asking, uh, I would like to ask if there are a PhD in film and media at your wonderful university, and what is the price for that? PhD, um, unfortunately, we don't have a specific PhD in in film and media. Um, you know, we are very well known in Italy for being one of the uh, leading institutions in the field of um, movies cinema and creative industries in general. Um, unfortunately, in this moment, we only offer two PhDs, uh, which, is, which is one is in communication markets and society. And the other one is in visual and media studies. So it is not, uh, so to say, it is not specific on films. And television maybe it's a bit broader um, another little problem related to phds is that maybe uh, 75 percent of the activities is held in english but maybe you have 20 25 percent of the activities held in italian so in order to do a phd maybe it's better to to know a little bit of italian at least b2 level that that can be a bit of an issue if you want to apply for a PhD. But if you are really interested in pursuing a PhD in our university, just get in touch with, with us or with our partner. And let's see if we can find a solution for you. Okay. Uh, can I just ask if the PhD is like a job, actually? You get uh, hired by the university or it's the different kind of PhD? Uh, well, it's, it's not a job in, in the traditional sense of the word because uh, you are not hired by the university, but you get, you get a scholarship in order to do the PhD, uh, which is officially, I mean, directly funded by the government. Okay. So PhD candidates get a scholarship uh, for three years because in Italy, the PhD is three years. 
uh, they get funded by the Ministry of Education. They get a scholarship that is 1,600 euros in order to carry out your research activities, participate in your webinars and produce your, you know, your research output during the PhD, you are, you are paid for it. So it's, it's the government who is actually paying you for the PhD. Great. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Trajan would like to know if you have summer courses in design. Um, we, we have a, a number of summer schools. Uh, we don't have a specific summer school on design because we are not, I mean, we are a communication media and advertising school. We are not a design school, I mean, proper design. So we don't teach students how to draw or how to create clothing or how to create uh, cars. So we don't do interior and exterior design. We teach students how to profit from the design. So how to become managers in the field of creative industries. That's what we do. We have a number of summer schools in that field, but not properly in the design sector. So practical design. Okay. Um, Neda uh, is asking, is there a bachelor program about Roman languages, uh, lingua romante uh, in bracket? Is it possible to go to Spain or France for a year with the Erasmus program? The answer is yes, we have a bachelor in uh, interpreting and translation where you can select the Roman languages as your study field. Um, so you can do Spanish, you can do French, you can do those languages derived from, from Latin uh, at undergraduate level. And you can also do an Erasmus period six months, a semester, or an entire year in one of our partner universities. Yes, you can. Please take into consideration that the bachelor's degree in interpreting and translation is held in Italian. So if you want to access the course, you need to have at least B2 level of Italian. And I think that there is also an entry test for, for yes. this bachelor program. Yes. Uh, okay, so we continue with uh, Peter Bogdanov and his question is, according to the English proficiency test, is it necessary to attend such test regardless of providing a B2 or C1 certificate in the, in the application for bachelor's degree? Well, of Maybe. course, of course, if you are able to provide a certificate during your application, you don't have to do the test. The test is an alternative for those candidates who are not able to get the certificate because of the pandemic problems, because maybe the test center was closed, so they were not able to do the test in, in, in practice. So we offer this optional opportunity. But if you have a certificate, we, we can accept that. Okay. Uh, Maria is asking, is there scholarship for masters? I think you already mentioned in the presentation uh, that uh, the scholarships actually they they are valid for the bachelor and master programs, but for yes. the two year master programs, I think. Yes, correct. We offer tuition fee reductions for the bachelor's degrees and the two year master's degrees. For some selected programs, up to 100% of the tuition fee discount generally speaking, 50% of the tuition fee discount for a selected number of candidates. So limited places available. The sooner you apply, the higher chances you get to, to get a discount, of course. Okay. Uh, maybe this is where we can mention then actually the sooner you apply and get admitted, the, the better chances you have to get a residence, a place in the uh, residence uh, accommodation that you offer, because there are limited places That's and only true. early admitted applicants um, 
are um, offered the chance to reserve a place in the residence. Um, so the sooner the better for every aspect of the application, scholarship and accommodation. If you want, I can maybe even tell you a bit more. Uh, I can be more specific. I can give you a suggestion maybe based on what happened in the past year, in 2021. I mean, in, in the year that we are finishing now. Uh, based on the past um, season, I can tell you that if you apply in December, January, February, maybe, I, I mean, you, you get higher chances to get a place in the dormitory and to get the tuition fee reduction. Because those are the three months where the applications are usually concentrated. You know, we open in November, so December, January, February are very hot months. If you apply in that period, you have higher chances to be selected. I totally agree, and we saw it with our applicants this year. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So we continue with the questions from Kusara. Uh, can you provide details about the costs of living in Milan? Yeah, sure. Another very good question. Well, like I said during the presentation, Milan is an international city. It is considered a European capital. So it can be pretty expensive in some cases. I'm not going to lie on that. I, I'll just tell you the truth. If you, if you want to live in the city center, if you want to rent a flat near the Duomo, it can be really, really expensive. Um, the average cost of living for Milan is somewhere around 1,000, 1,200 euros per month, including accommodation, groceries, and free time activities, I would say. Um, okay. I think that, that question we answered um, about the level in Italian. I mean, it was from Neda. <laughs> she says that she has B2 in Italian. Very so good. The bachelor in uh, Roman languages. Uh, if very I good. Remember correct. Yes. B2 in Italian is very impressive. <laughs> so she may be, I mean, you should apply as soon as you can. <laughs> I have to mention that we have one student who enrolled in this program, the translation one Italian. Yeah. So uh, I don't see any more questions. So guys, if you have questions, pop up in the chat screen. It's always, um, I mean, I always like when I meet international students who have B2, maybe C1, in some one level of Italian. It's always, I mean, it's always great because they are, they are, they are actually ready to study in Italy, in Italian, and they are so committed. So it's like, wow, I mean, apply immediately. <laughs> yes. But actually, you, I think we would all agree that if you, even if you study in English, uh, yes. it's better to have some level in Italian and to continue studying in Italian because outside the university, there is a bureaucracy, Italy, institutions where you absolutely need uh, Italian to, to cope with. That is true. Well, if you choose a program held in English, like, for example, the Bachelor in Corporate Communication, you don't need Italian at the beginning. I mean, when, when you get to Milan, everybody speaks English inside the university. And for the first weeks, for the first uh, maybe two months, you don't need Italian in order to survive. Also because Milan is a very international city. But, uh, you know, at the end of the day, if you do a study abroad experience in Italy as a degree seeking student, at the end of the day, you will learn Italian because the Italian people are so easygoing and uh, you, know, you, will, you will find yourself immersed in a multicultural environment and you will start just speaking Italian without even realizing it. Mm -hmm. I think there's some more questions. Um, what extracurricular activities are included in the degree of corporate communication and public relations? 
Well, you can do a lot of things. Um, the study plan has a number of slots for elective courses. So you can maybe borrow some courses from other programs and put them in your study plan as elective activities first. And then you can also do extracurricular activities. Um, I didn't mention anything about sports in our presentation, but if you are into sports, for example, you can join our um, Milan University Sports Center. You know, in Milan, we have a unique sports center for all the universities based in Milan. And we share our experiences with the other universities which are based in Milan. And so if you are into sports, if you want to do sports with your, uh, with your colleagues, you can join the university sports center and practice the sport that you like the most. But you can do really a lot of things. Um, there are plenty of extracurricular activities that you can add to your experience. So thank you, Alberto. I just want to say something to the audience, and then we continue. След три минутки започва презентацията на Джон Кабат, който иска може с този линк да се присъедини, който иска да остане, да заповяда и да още въпроси можем да отговаряме, ако имате такива. So I just mentioned that the next presentation is starting in, uh, uh, and again, the colleagues are sending this uh, link again. Yeah, I But we continue. So. so if there are any questions from those who are still um, listening to us, uh, we are here to answer. So, yeah. Um, and I think I, I see that Neda has added that she not only adores the Italian language, but also the culture. So I think she's pretty ready <laughs> to apply. I think, <laughs> I think she's ready. I mean, yeah, she's ready. She, Get a residence. <laughs> yeah, I think she's ready to apply. I mean, we will we will open our application window, our application period, in mid November, probably the fifth around the fifteenth of November, so one month from now. And uh, as soon as we open, you are. I mean, you are welcome to apply. Okay. Um, uh, another question from Svetelina. What advice would you give to someone starting the university for the first year in Yom? Like a bachelor student starting the, the program for the first time, the first year. I would say, like I said before, I would say just um, be focused, be brave, be open, uh, get ready for a really really immersive experience because Universita Yulm is 360 degrees so it's not only classes lectures books studying is the full package because we organize events because we have uh, you know managers and CEOs uh, VIPs from the working uh, world from the world of work coming inside the university to teach classes. Um, I didn't mention that our rector, the, the rector of the university, Professor Canova, is the most important cinema critic in Italy. So, you know, it's get ready for a 360 degrees experience and also enjoy because, you know, Hume can be also a lot of fun. It's a serious place where you need to stay focused and do your studies, but you can also have fun. Okay. No more questions for now. I see um, the guys are thanking you for answering and for the great presentation. Oh, thank you. It's me who should thank you all for, for having me today. It was a great, great opportunity, and the audience was was great. Very, very interactive. A lot of questions. Focused questions. Very good questions indeed. Yes. I think Alberto, no more questions. If you want to share something else, say something. Did you well, forget something? <laughs> I just want to say that I am really looking forward to meeting you in person on campus. You know. Um, 
Here in Italy, we have reopened the universities to our students. We have now 75% of students in presence. So it's like, it's like two years ago, basically. And uh, I'm really looking forward to meeting you in person on campus as soon as possible. And I really wish you all the best for your application. And hopefully you will become part of the Universita Yum experience yourself. So if you're interested in our academic offer, please apply as soon as you can and um, be ready for this great experience that is joining our university. Thank you. You know, I'm, you know, I'm still excited because uh, as you know, I joined Universita Yum a year ago mm -hmm. because before I was working for another public university in Italy. And after 12 months, I am still excited and pumped up. So <laughs> it means that it is really a very good place to be. It means a lot, yes. yes. <laughs> I have nothing else to add. Perfect ending lines. <laughs> okay, so Alberto, thank you once again. It was thank really, you, really, really informative and very well um, done presentation. So, okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Enjoy the weekend and enjoy the rest of the study in Italy fair. Thank yeah. you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.